Oye, mami, ¿dónde está? Contéstame el celular. Yo ya no sé qué hacer. Bien que tú estás con él. Yo no te traté muy bien. Mami, eso ya lo sé. Pero yo te quiero besar. A él que le vas a importar. Yo soy el que llamará. Dale, mami, contesta. Y es que quiero saber. ¿Cómo es que te vas con él? Yo no te traté muy bien. Mami, eso ya lo sé. Mami, tú y yo, cuando hacemos el amor, there's no other one to wish you be alone. So take it easy, babe, I'll say you believe me. I know you have the reasons why you should leave me. I know for tanto tiempo time, I keep messing it up. But baby, I'm just trying to do just fine. So please come away, no lo I am okay. He doesn't love you back, he forgets your name. He forgets your name. No, I'm funny, he does us money. I know I'm funny, he does us money. What do we do with it? What do we do with it? I make you smile, I believe. See you on my mind. Oye, mami, ¿dónde está? Contesta mi celular. Yo ya no sé qué hacer. Bien que tú estás con él. Yo no te traté muy bien. Mami, eso ya lo sé. Pero yo te quiero besar. A él que no es importar. Yo soy el que llamará. Dale, mami, contesta. Y es que quiero saber cómo es que te vas con él. Yo no te traté muy bien, mami, eso ya lo sé. Hey, I know I did wrong. Hey, I shouldn't have said so. My job doesn't pay off. Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the FST Improv Interviews. My name is Will Luera, the director of improv at Florida Studio Theater. And uh, we started to do these Friday night interviews uh, featuring uh, improv performers, directors, teachers from all over the world. Uh, came out of our uh, Sarasota Improv Festival, which went virtual this past year. Uh, we started to do them there. They were so uh, well received that we're now doing them every Friday night. Uh, so uh, for those of you who have not watched these before, the, the uh, format's pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to uh, welcome the guests uh, on in a little bit, uh, and then I'm going to throw an improv topic uh, to them, and then we're going to chat about that, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, so this uh, this next uh, of my, my next guest is uh, in the improv interview series is a guy I've known for, God, I want to put a number of years behind it. Maybe he could help me once he's on. Uh, I'm going to say maybe about 10 years or so. Uh, uh, and um, we've definitely crossed paths a number of different times and a number of different festivals. Uh, and uh, I have to say that his team, Two Man No Show, uh, the team that he's on with our friend uh, Isaac, is definitely one of my favorite improv groups to, uh, to see. And uh, I think I, I've told him before, and I'll say it again when he comes on, uh, that he, it's one of those groups that, uh, you know, sometimes that – uh, as improv performers, you're allowed to go see uh, shows live at a festival. Like, I don't care. I will buy a ticket. I want to get a good view to this group because they're just so hilarious. I was lucky enough to get them to the Sarasota Improv Festival last week. Uh, and I'm lucky uh, to, to uh, have this uh, guy not, not only as a fellow colleague in the art form, but also as a friend. Uh, so uh, let's welcome uh, to – oh, notice how we're on StreamYard this week, not on Zoom. Uh, I'm having drama with Zoom. But uh, we're on StreamYard this year, so let's uh, this week. So let's welcome to the uh, uh, to the StreamYard stage, uh, Mr. Ken Hall. All right, Ken. Hey, StreamYard, StreamYard, great. <laughs> yes. I just oh. by saying I love what you're doing with the improv scene in Ireland. Uh, <laughs> really, you work hard. Is that? <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I dabble in pretty much every improv scene in the world. So uh... <laughs> I, I have to confess, I talked to Isaac beforehand, uh, the other half of Two Man No Show, and like I'm doing this podcast with Will. <laughs> what should I say? Give me a joke. And <laughs> Isaac told me to start with that. So uh, Isaac says hi, by the way. So oh, hello to Isaac, and I know exactly why he's saying that. I, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we uh, it's a callback from I think the interview that you did with them months ago. Yes, but it's for me, so it's we're we're taking this to another level. <laughs> yeah, he came on pretending uh, he did some characterized version of Neil Curran. Who oh, I don't do you know Neil from Ireland? I I know of him. I think I may have met him once in passing. 
I've never seen him before, but I've heard nothing but great things. Yeah, no, he's a he's a great guy, and he uh uh yeah, Isaac did like some sort of bastardized, characterized version of him uh, <laughs> uh, that was uh that was hilarious and and very memorable. Uh, so Ken, how how are you, man? Where, where are you at right now? I'm in Toronto. And I'm good. I'm good in Toronto. I'm good in Toronto. Um, yeah, it's been you know, wow, it's so much has changed since last time, you know, we've seen each other. Um, yeah. But I got to say, things are generally pretty good, and I'm I remain more of an optimist. So I'm trying to look for those silver linings in amongst everything, and you know, keep mm. it with a lot of things. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the uh, I'm the same way. I'm just trying to keep myself uh, busy uh, in a lot of different ways, uh, you know, creatively, artistically, physically, etc. You're you're growing your facial hair. Yeah, that's uh... Fa uh, facially. Oh yeah, and I should. Uh, my mom saw this mask on me and she thought I was growing like neck hair or something. She's like, she's like, what's with your facial hair? And I'm like, no, no, no that's not a ne neck beard. I thought it was a fashion show. I thought it was a cravat. Or, yeah. uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and embrace that. That's what I'm true. That's my contribution to the whole yeah. mask. <laughs> mask thing. That's so, uh, I told you before that, uh, and, and I'm glad that like every guest that I've had on has been game for this one thing of like, uh, you know, we're going to start with a uh, improv topic, and uh, I'm not going to tell you. I've told them I'm like I, I can tell you ahead of time, or you could be surprised. And everybody's been open to being surprised, which is great, right. and and speak to the improv spirit. So I'll yeah. tell you exactly what 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 uh, before I, I reveal it. Uh, it's nothing like you know big. It's not like a big secret. But basically, every one of my titles, every one of my classes in my curriculum, mm -hmm. we have a six level curriculum. All of them have a title, uh, and uh, and what I've done is I took all those titles, put them into a randomizer. And, and now I, I'm going, to, I'm, I'm, we're working through them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the week, the one that came up for you uh, mm -hmm. is the idea of breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> breaking the fourth wall. It went naturally came up? Uh, yeah, it came up through the randomizer. Like the randomizer said, oh. this is the one that we're talking about today. That's so perfect. <laughs> I know. And, and I feel like everyone that I've had on has had a perfect one for them. And I, uh, and, and, and so when I saw it come up for you, I was like, yes, yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be a good one uh, to talk about with Ken. Because uh, I think um, I, I, I should say that Two Man No Show and uh, there's a couple of other groups around the world. Uh, I think there's like Hip Bang, another Canadian group, I think. And then uh, Le, Le Carp Haute out of uh, France. I consider to be like uh, – improv cousins of my main group big bang like kind of like we we have like similar aesthetics we really like to mess with each other on stage uh and i think in a way we're very playfully aware of the audience we know that the audience is there and we we, we play off of that yeah. uh like we don't really treat it as a precious like sacred relationship we know the fourth wall is there and we i, I feel like we're consciously playing with it in fact I, I you know i say that and i just remembered one show you guys did here in sarasota where i believe it was isaac who went around and shook everybody's hand in the audience before the show even started yeah two and there were, <laughs> two what, what was that it was two it was over two floors as well because it was over two floors. Space. so i went down onto the stage dancing in amongst the crowd but he went up to the balcony and literally shook everyone's hands <laughs> Not again yeah. nowadays. Don't do that now. Uh, but, uh, you know, last year, yeah. And that's the thing. It's like we went down there and we realized that within Florida, <laughs> there's a lot of perhaps retirees that may not <laughs> totally uh, understand or dig our clown provish style. So we know that going in that. So it's like we want to endear ourselves with the audience. We want to play with their audience. We want to feel them out as well. We want to give them what they want. Right, mm. sort of like force them be like, this is our story, this is our our, our set for tonight. Because we also we were conscious that both of those shows that we did last year at Sarasota were forty five minutes long, so that's a long time to sustain. So yeah, it's going into you like, oh, could we get a word or a suggestion? And 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 going on a forum, it was more of like, who's here? Let's let's chat. Let's get to who you know. Let's get to know each other. And I, <laughs> I don't know if you had that same. If it was that show, but we got a lot of heckling at one of them. Like, oh, did, did you? I, I'm trying to. I can't remember. Oh yeah. Okay. So maybe it was the second show because I think it's our show. Um, and yeah, it, it, heckling only in the sense of like. 
people <laughs> kind of forget that they're in a theater and that uh -huh. we've opened that door to be like, Hey, we see you. We want to banner with you. We want to play with you. They were often at times they would like comment on things. Uh, and we would often, you know, we would stop our set and be like, great, we're going to just change our location. Where are we? Who are we now? And we actually got one of the best, uh, <laughs> one of the best offers. Uh, we just put it out there like, great, who are we now? <laughs> and this, this woman, she's like, you're two phony balonies. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh, great. I've never, in like 16 part years of Boomer Brown, never been a phony baloney. <laughs> so then we started to see me like, <laughs> we were both phony balonies <laughs> and we were in a smelly deli and that's our comedy. That is our, <laughs> Oh man. Now you just said something that I think is, um, uh, uh I, I don't think I've ever heard you describe your show. Uh, uh but you just said something that jumped out of it. You said clown prog. Is that what you just said? Yeah. Clown prog. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a label that, so both me and Isaac, for, uh, we've been a duo, Tuna and Show, for just over 11 years, actually. Mm -hmm. And our style early on, um, we met at the Second City Conservatory program here in Toronto, and improv was our background. And then uh, we had a, a Fringe show. Isaac submitted to the Toronto Fringe Festival. And we never really worked together as a duo before, but he's mm -hmm. like, we'll do a show. I'm like, for sure, let's do it. But our, our knowledge of comedy and experience up until that point was only improv and, and sketch. And we okay. we didn't have a show about a month before we opened. So we're like, let's call ourselves Two Men No Show. So it's kind of in the name. If we don't show up, it's literally in the name. And we put a skeleton <laughs> show together. We had beats. It was kind of like, all right, we're going to start with this sketch. But we because we weren't strong writers and like in the moment, we would say a line, a pre-written joke, and it's like, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> so rather than live in that, it, you know, rather than like, like uh, instead of altering course, we're like, well, let's just say another joke then. And so mm -hmm. the audience like that one, great. Um, and so that was the thing. We started to break the wall, literally the very first shows that we would do, oh. because we were in combination because we were so green, but it also played to our strengths as improvisers. And we wanted to just include our show, like, are, are like to include everyone in our in our show you know we're not precious with that and if mm. more of like especially if the show is failing <laughs> like yeah <laughs> let's smash that wall let's change, <laughs> let's change our show but if you're yeah. into a bad show you can't change it then you know yeah. so we have we want to take that on of like we want to find out what's fun for you guys and we want to mm -hmm. get that experience and it's a unique experience and it's like one of those things of like oh you had to be there to see that so for yes. Sarasota, it, you know it's right it, you know a lot of people kind of like this guy <laughs> around and literally check everyone's hands you're not going to see that in most improv in most improv shows and so we got uh, in our director at the time um uh, a Toronto guy here, Mark Andrada, who's such a great clown. Not, like he's a clown. His friends in clown. He does sketch and improv as well. But uh, that was we were very influenced by. But that's just our natural style. Like we just want to break that mm -hmm. wall. And so over the years, people have been like, "Oh, you're very clown prop. You're clown, but you're improv." And and mm -hmm. and sort of undefinable. But that that's kind of like the thing that is that that's probably the most accurate description of us. I think. Mm, mm, yeah, I, I um, we play moments. It's like it doesn't matter, and we're you know you mentioned that earlier, like listening to the audience, and we're well aware of what, <laughs> or when an audience is digging it and when they're not digging it, and if they're not <laughs> it, why continue with that? But that just yeah. doesn't make sense. So we will you know we'll call ourselves out, or we'll start picking on an audience member, you know, <laughs> or we'll leave the venue, or <laughs> we'll do something, <laughs> make things up, you know. We've done that on many on quite a few occasions <laughs> to literally leave our scene, leave our set, <laughs> to like go around the parking lot to come in through the front door. No, you do not. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we did that actually. I remember in Philadelphia, it was the tail end of a tropical storm. <laughs> and we, left, we left the stage and then we went around the side and it's just pouring. So we come out on, we, we go through the audience, we come out back on stage again and we're just soaked because we were literally in a tropical storm so but it's fun it's, and it's again it's memorable it's a visceral laugh and it's an experience and we can be either you really dig that um or you really don't <laughs> so right, right. 
there's it's very little we get kind of like yeah it was an all right show it was more and that was awesome i've never seen anything like that or like i never want to see that ever again kind of thing you know and, and that's kind of like uh you said something that i i find very important in our uh in our freeform shows of big bang um we try to make sure that every show and i try to tr sort of put this in the in the um philosophy of the group is that every i want every show to be a unique experience like yeah. i want it to be just something unique for that audience something that could only be created that night and is a combination mm -hmm. of the space the cast and the audience and a lot of that has to do with what you were saying of like responding uh like uh, or what we're both saying is like we're actively listening and responding to the audience right like they'll tell you hey we're digging this thing or we're not or like you said or we're not digging it yeah. um yeah we uh uh you while you were talking about the uh or the parking lot walking around in the tropical storm story mm. it reminded me of like uh uh the one of the crazier things that we did with big bang was um i don't know if you uh remember paul dome uh who's uh one of the lighter members of our cast i mean he's just very a very like he's he's got to weigh about 120 pounds i mean he's a, just a very light guy and so suddenly within our show we um we just started to uh uh we started to pick him up and then carry him back and forth like we started to, like we and we just and and, and by uh we i was me and my friend dave sawyer just mm -hmm. wouldn't let wouldn't put paul home down like we would carry him we put him over our shoulder and then eventually we we're like you know what There's an entire audience here and so we literally put him we put paul onto the audience literally take him over to the audience and they body surfed him like yeah. he body surfed him all through the audience uh and we started to pretend that he was like uh uh, as he was going up, we were pretending that he was hiking a mountain. But then, <laughs> as he was coming down, we were pretending that he was on—he was in the uh, riding an avalanche down the mountain. Oh, lovely! <laughs> the audience was was totally for it. But again, that was something that was created. It was a unique creation between us and the, uh, and the audience. I had a similar experience. I mean, Isaac, uh, not not too long ago, actually, in the last like six months or so, we did a show here in Toronto at Bad Dog Theater, which is a wonderful improv venue, and we have a monthly show here called Party Hard Hard Party with another show called Iron and Calls. And uh, we were <laughs> we got called up, so we go up there and our, our theme song is playing. And uh, Isaac clipped the back of my shoe, so my sneaker, because my my heel came out of my sneaker. So <laughs> he, he takes the sneaker off my foot, and then he hands it to the front row. And then the guy in the front row is like, "Okay." So he passes it back, and then I'm like, "Okay, great, let's play this game." So then I took <laughs> my other shoe off, handed it to the guy. He starts passing it back, and then I'm like, "What else now?" So I'm like, oh, "Okay, great." And this is the show hasn't even like started, right? Like. So then I go and get a chair, hand it to the front row person <laughs> to get them to start passing chairs going back. <laughs> uh, and by that theater, there are these giant wooden benches. <laughs> so I picked up a bench and again sent that <laughs> through the audience. Uh, and then I'm like, I got to send my, you know, I just in the spirit of hiking, I'm like, what's next? Well, the only thing left is me. <laughs> and I, yeah, to shimmy me back. And I went back all the way to the back. And then Isaac, who is a bit bigger than me, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm I'm relatively small, you know, four seven three quarters, a <laughs> fairly good. Guy. Isaac is a bigger dude, and so he tried it. <laughs> he only got to the second row. They couldn't. Uh, <laughs> he got stuck actually in between. His head was in in the chair in the back of the chair, and he had his legs <laughs> clapping as if he was an audience member. We have this on video actually. It's one. <laughs> And, and so again, like that's our thing of like, but that was, you know, we're, we don't talk about it and be like, hey, I tell you what, yeah. throw up, step on my, like, none of that. It's, it's just, you yeah. know, that beautiful spirit. I remember a set that, that you played in at Del Close Marathon with Improv Boston that mm -hmm. I still remember to this day, and it was amazing because you, it was so fast, so tight, so funny, and you had wrapped everything up, I think, in like 20 minutes or 22 minutes, and you had 25. And when you play the festival, it's like, oh, you know, yeah, it's like you know, the more the merrier kind of thing. But I remember that it was so, such a hot set, and, yeah. You know, and the audience was just like, yeah. You and you found yourself on the back row, and you're like, okay, we're done. We're like, yeah. Let's go. You called for lights. It was beautiful. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I, yeah. We uh, we we talk about that show often. I mean, that was definitely a defining moment for us. Uh, that was probably when 
Improv Boston became Big Bang was that show. Cause that, that was a show where we're just like, this is something, what we just did was something so special and memorable. So good. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That was amazing. Um, I, have you ever uh, seen uh, Too Much Light it Makes the Baby Go Blind? Uh, or, or maybe heard of them? Yeah. Uh, I mean, New York City, uh, uh, 11, 10, 10, 11 years ago. Yeah, yeah, and so I, uh, I as you know, I'm, I'm from Chicago, and so they, uh, yeah. uh, I got to see them in Chicago, and they were such an inspiring show for me in regards to how I related to the audience mm. in this way, and I think we're, we, we're both speaking to it, is that, because you were just talking about them passing the shoes and then the benches and all of that, is that the, uh, I, I feel like audiences, audiences are so smart and if you treat them as a smart being mm -hmm. they will rise to where you're at and they will play the game with you they will learn the game and play the game with you that I, absolutely i i did another set with a couple of friends here in toronto uh my, my friends gordon cassie and we did a 12 minute set where we had no words and it was just let's play games mm -hmm. and we came up there and it was just like right hey, we got intro and none of this was planned but again it was the relationship with the audience so we came up and we did like great you know and usually you would stop clapping and then you'd be like hi everyone we're going to intro the show blah 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 we're this people can we get a suggestion so we we got up there and we danced we just clapped we stopped clapping and then i'm like i don't keep clapping <laughs> so then it, <laughs> and then it's like to that point of like oh this is different and yeah. Leaned into that, and then audience members started clapping. So it's like we find this game, and it's a very clown based thing. It's just like, why don't we just play this game? Do you want to play? Who wants to play? And if they're into the game, everyone, you know, like that's such a, you're building this together, you're discovering this together. And just as you said, like, I, I think audiences are very smart, and I think audiences like to have experiences and they want to be, uh, they want to be in on the fun. And yeah. I think we're, we can follow ourselves into a bit of a trap is that we think improv is simply verbal and yeah, it's right being quick and references and things like that and of course i mean that's a, a big part of improv but for me there's so much pleasure and joy of just playing with physicality but that connection build that connection you tell me audience what do you want to do let's do you want to find a game together let's just mm -hmm. this together and so we did the most ridiculous like the the most avant-garde like just weird fever dream with no words and it, we laughed for 20 minutes afterwards and it was that show where people are coming up and being like what was that <laughs> like that <laughs> and i love it too because it wasn't even it wasn't even a lot of like improv audience it was like a general audience so mm -hmm. you know and i'm sure in many places that you're often playing to a lot of improv you, you know the people like yeah. improvisers fellow improvisers so it's nice that there's a, a general audience who don't even have a lot of knowledge of what improv is you know i'm not doing like a herald or like dissecting that it was just like let's just play these ridiculous games but we're so intentional of giving you what you want of mm -hmm. discovering the games and, and bringing you in on our process and so for me i think it just makes it so much accessible and it's so nice not to have to think yeah. it's like a relief and I think an audience is kind of like, oh, this is it. They're so used to a story, a plot, and and again, that's that that's wonderful. And but I, I for I know for myself, I was never really good at that. I always felt like I was I was inventing information. I felt like I was creating stories, and I have to caretake, and I have to like so many like moving parts that I have to keep track of. For me, I love the simplicity of just having a fun game to play. And I, I don't mean game of the scene, right? So I just mean like let's just play a game. Like Isaac going around shaking everyone's hand. That's a game. Let's just play this yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that that that's great. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you're hitting on a lot of the things that uh that that uh I, I try to tell my my students and and this is great. Like I said, uh, the, all these videos are meant to pair up with some of my with my classes, and uh, I think this is you're articulating some of these concepts of how to play with the how to play with the audience so well. I um I, I yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, like, I think one of the reasons that um, I, I love this in a couple of reasons, the stuff that me and Isaac did, we just organically found our style. Yeah. Because we don't fit in. We've never fit in in our personal lives. Like, we've always been the underdogs and the uh, the people that kind of stand out in a way. So it was lovely to, to be like, great, we are just going to do us. And um, I, our, our first director, Mark, was like, yeah, guys, it's a sloppy show. And it was. It was a very sloppy show. But it was so fun. Yeah. And we've had so many reviewers over the years being like, I don't know why I like this, but I 
like they're questioning themselves even in the in the thing. <laughs> It's over the years, and people have commented, we love the vaudevillian aspect. We love this sort of clownish thing. So we, like, people have been, like, planting that seed. So we're like, okay, let's explore it. And so over the years, we started to even step away from improv in the sense the training clown. And it's all of mm -hmm. this the stuff that we talk about, pursuing the fun, finding the fun and pleasure to perform. That's all rooted in clown, and it's the connection with the audience. The, the complicity with you and your partner mm -hmm. as it's happening in the moment with an audience and speaking to that as well and again like i've done it I'm like it's so refreshing to step away from rules i really like breaking rules oh I, my god <laughs> so like, it's the matrix it's kind of like we've never been here before you can do anything yes you can do anything and and <laughs> we, we prove it time and time again we've done <laughs> i mean isaac have done a handful of like zoom shows as well and i don't know if it's improv but it's entertaining <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if it's like stuff like, <laughs> <laughs> like I just love that kind of stuff, and you know, like that's it. Is just like as a performer in front of an audience, the audience is paying you to to, to give them a good time, to have fun, yeah. and yeah. it we get so hung up on the technique, the mechanics of like, did I do it right, rather than like remembering why we got into it in the first place. It's, yeah. it's fun. It's fun. My, my first level A class at Second City, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm having fun in the, <laughs> making so many mistakes along the way. But that's, that's the joy of it. And that, that's the, the beautiful thing. And, and to incorporate an audience, and it's a, it's a show that's special to them on that night. Mm. Yeah, I, um, uh, yeah the, the whole idea of, like, uh, of, of being surprised I, and, and keeping it, uh, keeping it fresh, uh, and I, I and the whole idea of rules, right? Uh, I'm, I want to touch on that because you hit on that, and a lot of uh, like for me when I was developing the freeform style of Big Bang, my first ten years were crucial because I was basically as a director. Whenever anybody said we're not supposed to do that or uh, that's not how you do it, I'm like, let's stop right here. Let's talk about that, right? Why are you not? Who said that? <laughs> right. And how do we how do we challenge that? How do we turn it on its head? And yeah. how do we find ourselves? How do we do it? Right. And so I, I remember like the first time I was doing um, the early version of Freeform had short form elements inserted in our long form. Mm -hmm. And it was just simple stuff, simple stuff like, you know, somebody we would have somebody on the side with the bell from like a short form game. Right. And in the middle of a scene for no reason whatsoever, they would just go ding. And then like what does it mean? I don't know. What are we supposed to do? I don't know. And then people would be like, no, you're supposed to intro the game and tell people how the bell works. I'm like, no, let's just ring the bell and see what happens. Oh, I love that. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it is. Exactly. As a performer, you're suddenly like, wait, so anything can happen? And I'm like, yes, anything can happen. One of my favorite um, comments uh, from our shows, and I've received this multiple times from different people in different circles, is that they'll talk about freeform and say like you are improvising what you are improvising the way I am thinking, mm. and so it's sort of like their brain is already like pe people are watching us and their brain is already making connections, yeah, uh, or, or starting to like be curious about what is happening, and our organic style just sort of rolls into all of those different crevices in people's brains. I think people would just really dig it, and like you said, they like it and they're not sure why. And, and, well, it, and it's from jokes then, but as you said, like it's it's they can see it. There's a structure around the play, and and they can follow it, you know. And 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 again, as you said, audiences are very smart. They can really see the pieces coming together mm -hmm. uh, within that as well. And that's a, that's a really nice that's great feedback. That's a really nice compliment that they're like, yeah, you're representing like how I'm thinking. You're like in my brain. <laughs> yeah, get out of my brain. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, 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 comments coming through. That's why I keep looking over to the side. We have uh, Anna Weatherwax, who I think you remember, saying she wants to see more. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, yeah. I didn't realize there was comments. Yeah, she's saying, uh, I want to see more. Crowd she went to see these crowd surfing vids. Uh, uh, Ken Breezy, uh, a friend of mine from L.A. Isaac is incredible. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so not, yeah. <laughs> Isaac is incredible. We were in an improv tourney out here in a couple of, couple of years ago with John Norris. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very good. It became us throwing chairs at each other for most of the set and yelling, and we won. 
<laughs> uh, Becca, our marketing director here at uh, uh, Sarasota, uh, what, what are some uh, what are some more of your favorite mo uh, mo memories of spontaneous moments on stage? Uh, uh, yeah, moments, uh, like the shoes and the handshakes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, one really epic one. Uh, we got invited to play the Detroit Improv Festival. A, a good friend of ours, Chris Moody, uh, from Detroit, who used to organize the uh, uh, Detroit Improv Festival, um, invited us to to play it. And they were the first ones that actually like we we would we would like you to come here. And uh, so it was very flattering to be invited to perform in a festival. And I, I can't remember if it was our first year or maybe our second year because we played it. I think about gosh, I think Isaac's done it eight or nine times. I've done it about six or seven so it's it's a, kind of like a second home for us we did an improv set at go comedy theater where the suggestion was mc escher and what that is you know it's that that sort of iconic all the, yeah, the stairs air. that go into the stairs <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, the best, the, like, it's the best suggestion and then you know again like that was so Again, the rules of gravity, the rules of physics no longer applied because mm -hmm. we've just given ourselves inspiration and full permission to live in this world where we're walking sideways, like literally on the ground sideways. Uh, like, it just, it was wonderful. Um, and we're, uh, it, it's, I mean, it's such a great question because there's so many that, like, our show is nothing but spontaneity and follow and play and 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 we've played so many festivals and such and and had so many memorable sets and um yeah for me <laughs> again it's like i'd like to mess with convention and if it requires us going into the audience <laughs> a lot of stuff has happened at detroit improv festival for us, like <laughs> like epic <laughs> epic shows where i remember we did this uh we opened for tj tj and friends mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a very nice compliment it's personally a burn. <laughs> but it's like, uh, at one point in her set, and in, in in the green room at the backstage of Detroit Improv Festival and Go Comedy in the theater, there's a little monitor, so you can actually watch the show, what's happening, uh, if you're in the in the green room. And there's a bunch of people, TJ's got to go on, <laughs> and TJ's like the best in the world. And uh, <laughs> we did this thing, we started to go into like, I think I became a rabbit, <laughs> so I went into the audience, and I'm I'm trying to get into some uh, into a woman's bag, like trying to fit myself in the bag. As I, I had to run through the green room because he had to go through the parking lot to come through the, the front doors, and he came in as like a Elmer Fuddish kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who used to live in Toronto that was actually backstage, and TJ looks at the monitor watching this ridiculousness. <laughs> uh, we're both in the audience. I'm trying to hunt a bag, and Isaac's trying to hunt me, basically. Uh, TJ is looking at the monitor, and he's like, Is this even improv anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Here's that after his own. That's lovely, man. I don't that's know. a compliment. It is. That's a compliment. <laughs> But that's us, and then like our audience again, like I think they really dig that that it, it is so wonderfully weird and and not just a, a herald, you know, like not yeah. just the regular run of the mill. It's like no, we want to we we want to get curious who's in the audience, you know, and, and call them out and speak to them and play with them, and and uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you are getting a hey from uh, Matt Walker uh, out here in Florida. Uh, also, I was told in person to give you a hey uh, from Luke Luke Johnson. Uh, I think he was the guy who moved you into your housing when you came down to the Sarasota Improv Festival. All right, Luke. Yeah, all right, man. It was great. We made it. Yeah. Uh, you remind me, uh, when you were telling uh, sharing that story about the bag, one of my favorite magical breaking the fourth wall moments, uh, this was back at Improv Boston early in our free form years. And again, we're sort of bending the rules of short form and long form. Uh, and so we were just like, uh, uh, we, we were in a two person scene and I was like talking about how, uh, uh, oh yeah, my uh, my date's coming over any minute to pick me up. And so I'm talking to this, my cast member and then I just turn to an audience member. I know I'm like, a, I say, oh, oh, she's here, she's here. And then I just turn to an audience member and put my, my, my hand out. And she just gave me this look, but then she gave me her hand and then she came on stage and then, okay, now you are my date. And I, you know, taking care of her, uh, you know, she's out, she's uh, on stage with me. And then it's at, cer at a certain point, my cast member's like, uh, my cast member's like, oh, oh, your dad's here. And then 
she turns out gets another audience member brings mm -hmm. them on stage and so now we have and this is these are two civilians no they're not improv improvisers or improv students or anything and now they're both up there improvising with us so we're playing like a short form game on stage yeah. with audience members but then at some point me and my castmate we were like hey uh, why don't we go get the food from the kitchen so we leave <laughs> and we leave two audience members on stage and the magical moment we left them out there for about 40 seconds Right. And they, they improvised. They stayed right. in character yeah. for those 40 right. seconds, improvised. And I think at a certain point, I, I, I remember one of them, it just started to dawn on them as to what the heck was happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then at that point, we come back out. I know. They're like, I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> next week. Or... <laughs> <laughs> but we ended up coming back out. We're like, okay, okay, we'll, we'll come back out and take care of you guys. That's amazing. Uh, I've often experienced that, like, uh, it's funny it, when, um, and it says you did a great job of looking after them and such, but it's mm -hmm. that sort of like, I, we can do it. We do it all the time. Yeah. And I think it's, if you're not un inhibited with the rules, am I doing it right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, then you're just, it's just playing. It's just like, we'll just play pretend then, you yeah. know? And we've already, like, no experience necessary because we've already done that as kids, you know? We've, yeah. you know, we know what that looks like. We forget it, though, I think, as we're adults. We get very serious and, like, you know, I'm in front of an audience and, you know, and, and that's understandable, but uh, it's it's so lovely that I, I've seen, I like teaching beginners as well or teaching drop-ins, for example, here in Toronto where I'm, like, no experience and people are doing great things. And you can see that they're playing to the best of their ability. Yeah. You know, they're surfing a wave and they're like, they know how to do it. But they're like they're so in the in the state of play, and they're and they're enjoying it, and they're finding success. They're listening, they're responding, they're reacting, they're having emotional responses, and and it's just really fun to see people show up, uh, yeah. and, and 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 be uninhibited. I know when people start to learn more theory and technique, I often have I often have this discussion with my students of trying to rekindle that sense of like okay, the rules are the rules, but let, let's remember why we're doing this and bringing that play. Mm -hmm into ease you know, and a lot of like self-talk and mindset of like oh i'm not good at this anymore you know or i lost the fun or i get into quote with my head yeah so with all, all of these things but um yeah it's it's so lovely i i want to share another spontaneous moment if can i it's one of my of course okay great course, yeah. uh, <laughs> cause, again there's so many but this one is like we got a standing ovation once and you know how rare standing ovations yeah. are in improv yeah. uh, and it was for a big city improv festival here in toronto uh festival. yeah probably about maybe a great festival right? about four or five four years ago or so and uh, that, that's why i saw you bust your head oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's spontaneous right we did not plan for my head to hit a metal critter <laughs> okay but the show must go on so uh uh but yeah we did this set where we were we endowed each other as like father son um, waiting for the principal, Isaac, bad student, you know, he did something like uh, he got in trouble. <laughs> and like within like the first minute or two, we, we just started bickering. And then I, I just made a choice. I'm like, I'm going to like give him a solid backhand. And I guess that Isaac sold it so well, went flying <laughs> off the chair. And then he just landed face down on the stage and he didn't move. <laughs> for 15 minutes. He, he did he stay there. And so I'm like, just like, you know, and I'm like, great, I'm like, we're gonna play this moment. We just have, to, I'm eating my peanuts and like having my juice box or whatever. Like, in the audience, it was such a beautiful moment because the audience, was like, what are they doing this? Like, this is so ridiculous. Yeah. And er, we've often had sets where, like, oh, wouldn't it be so great if we just played that moment? But usually there's a fear that, like, oh, no, we can't stay here. We gotta like. You know, I, I got to get up and be like, hey, are you okay? I'm sorry, son, I shouldn't have hit you. But, uh, you know, um, but it was so lovely that both of us were so un uh, so in sync to be like, we're just going to live in this moment. Because <laughs> oh, that takes so much. Like, you're an actor. For Isaac, you're like, that's a bold choice. Just, you know, like, talking about, like, <laughs> like committing, to, you know, yeah. to the team of just lying there for 50 minutes. <laughs> you're just, yeah. You know, like, that's you know, <laughs> that's and it was lovely it was like it was riding waves it got yeah. the, the audience like oh my god laughing and then get to a point where it like it subsides and then you know and, but it's all clown because the whole time i'm at my contact with the audience it's like a conversation i'm carrying a conversation on and they were it was so beautiful it was so in the moment 
And as I said, we rode that wave, that one wave for like 15 minutes. And then we got a stand ovation. And, and that's one of the most memorable sets because it also included the audience in such a, you know, like a big way, you know, yeah. oh, it was beautiful. That is, that is, that is amazing. Oh, that is so, thank you so much for sharing those stories. Uh, uh, Ken, I know we're down, I know you have a show uh, in a few minutes, uh, but I just wanted to, uh, I, a few people have been uh, commenting, of course, on your, your work on uh, Umbrella Academy. Uh, uh, baby Pogo. Uh, I didn't play in Baby Pogo, actually, just to clarify. I oh. played uh, Adult Pogo and Geriatric Pogo. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Pogo. Elderly, <laughs> elderly, <laughs> and it's my shoulders down. It's um, Adam Godling from Breaking Bad, who does the voice and the face of Pogo, uh, and it's uh, Pogo is a joy. He's just such a pleasure, and I, I really, I, I have an affinity for Pogo. So that was primarily in season one uh, that I did that, and also played Herb in uh, in season one, and he's in a bigger way in season two. Yes, yeah, a lot, lot of fans. Uh, yeah, my uh, a Luke, who I told you who I work with, uh, didn't he didn't put two and two together until I posted about this umbrella until I posted about this uh, interview, and he was like, oh, "I met him," <laughs> and so he was very, very excited. Yeah, uh, so uh, people could see you in a, in about fifteen minutes, right? Uh, you want you want to quickly plug that in any classes you have coming up? No, uh, I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing a show in Cincinnati <laughs> right now. Uh, call time is in one minute, but you know, like spirit of improv, right? Uh, I, I, it's called Worlds Collide. Um, it's on. If I can send it to you, Will, is it possible for you to put it in the chat or something, or for people to? I'll put it. Yeah, I'll, put, I'll post. I'll post it in the chat. Okay, great. Yeah, that'd be super cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I'm playing with the the artistic director of uh, Improv Cincinnati. His name's Colin Thornton. And so he reached out and he's like, hey, do you want to do a Zoom show? I'm like, sure, let's do it. And it's funny, I mean, like, uh, in, in a lot of the classes I've been teaching, like drop-ins and like what have you, it's it's no longer just teaching the people in your immediate vicinity. Uh, it's it's everywhere, right? <laughs> like I, I taught a drop-in a few weeks ago where someone was Zooming in from Tel Aviv, you know, and, and people from Australia and India. Like, it's just, uh, it's, it's pretty wonderful that... Like, it's a giant buffet. You can train <laughs> and like jump into shows anywhere in the world now. So, yeah, uh, I mean, it, yeah, it's not that it's going to really change. Uh, I mean, I, I'm hoping that aspects of it, of course, I'm looking forward for every, uh, being all together again. Uh, but I also hope like aspects of this do stick around. Yeah, like, you did a show not too long ago, like a, like an actual in person improv show. I think we I did. We opened for six yeah. weeks. Uh, we wrote when the numbers were, were pretty low here in Sarasota specifically. Uh, reopened for about six weeks, but then once it started to spike, we just made the, you know, the, the correct decision of shutting everything down again. So fair, good, yeah, safe. Be safe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so you have a uh, you you also teach it uh, as well, right? And people could find that on online. Yeah, I'm actually uh, actually I'm going to be teaching my clown class, uh, my first digital or like online version of clown uh, through the Second City, which will be starting I think in just about ten days or so, about a week and a half. Uh, oh. So my public speaking class. Oh, someone posted. Yeah, there it is. World's Clyde right there. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, that's on it. Matt is, I've always said that about Matt is always on. Uh, <laughs> and, and was, uh, I'm also teaching my public speaking class uh, at Second City and teaching a comedic on camera class through Bad Dog and, and a mindfulness class as well uh, through Bad Dog. Oh, no way. Yeah. That's great. But well, so much of improv is about being in the moment and being yeah. present and to accept things as they are and to experience yeah. things as they are. And uh, so I, I had a, a great opportunity to to teach, and I've been doing meditation over the past five years, and going off doing these ten day silent meditation retreats uh, when I can. So, I'm, and I know how much it's benefited me. And I know that as a performer, I wish I had access to meditation and calming and, and being with my thoughts and feelings, whether it be for classes or for shows, uh, and, and becoming just more aware of you know your experiences and your self talk and all that kind of stuff so it's a really holistic way of, of, of self-supporting yourself so yeah well, that's what i got going on that's awesome ken thank you so much for, for making time it was so great to catch up i mean i feel like it i could just keep talking about you uh, talking about you and with you hey, come to Cincinnati. Come on. <laughs> yeah, <let's do> it. <laughs> 
Uh, everybody, once again, this is Ken Hall from uh, Two Man No Show and Second City and Umbrella Academy. And overall, just a great guy, very funny comedian. And uh, uh, yeah, super, uh, super, super friend. So uh, uh, definitely try to take classes with him, follow him. Everybody jump on a bus to Cincinnati and let's go watch him uh, in Worlds Collide. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Leave him pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, thank you. Thank you so much for making the time. You will. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Always great chatting with you. Yeah, we did it. StreamYard, thank you for uh for coming through when the when Zoom started failing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you everybody uh, for uh, for tuning in. We have another interview next week. We'll be announcing that soon. All right. Thank you, Ken. Bye everyone. <laughs> Bye.